all of you know our next speaker, um, uh, Brother Afshin Rafansi. I've got a note written here that he has been in the media for over two decades. I just want to know how youthful you look after so many years in the media, firstly. Um, secondly, he has done an awful lot of work um, with lots of different channels, plus he uh, finds the time to write novels as well, um, and, and I'm sure we very much appreciate him being here within his busy schedule. So our next presentation is by uh, Brother Afshin Rathansi. Please welcome him in the usual manner. Yes, I would rather jump the gun. <laughs> no, that's perfectly okay. Just that the first, first time. Yeah, in fact, the last time I had to... No, 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 please do. The last time I had to speak about uh, Iran uh, in the past 12 months, uh, it was in front of a whole group of uh, Western journalists. I think I was in a panel of four people who... Um, I think everything I said, they wanted... Uh, I think they were thinking of throwing me out the window, actually. Such as... Uh, you may face that here again. <laughs> we're on the ground for now. Oh, no, we're on the basement. Um, the, um, such is uh, the interest in the Western media uh, on Iran. I never, it never was like that uh, a couple of years ago. I think they were interested in uh, another country than um, Iraq. I had expected a, a few more uh, journalists here because um, uh, I was... Uh, reminded uh, by something my little brother, who's also a journalist, said at a, at a uh, university in Washington, at Georgetown, to journalists. He said to journalists, um, and there were um, some people who have read BBC guidelines and so forth, I, I've spent most of my life at the BBC, that uh, he told the journalists at Georgetown University that, that uh, obje objectivity is a myth and that uh, every person is biased, and one shouldn't try and negate those individual biases. One should embrace those biases and realize where they are. I had to uh, say that quite a few times uh, to journalists who've been attacking me, and so many journalists um, have been attacking anyone who's been talking like uh, some of the people on, the, on this panel tonight when it comes to Iran. I joked at first uh, about um, my knowledge of Iran to, to some friends who, and, and colleagues who are Iranian, who take a very different tack. I, I lived there for a year and a bit, so I'm not uh, uh, the greatest expert on the Islamic uh, Republic. I, I joked that, uh, to, to one of them, well, I'll just say where it is. And I think uh, where it is actually is, is the whole point of Iran, uh, aside from its resources. The geographical context uh, is being entirely missing from media representations of what has been happening in Iran. If we, uh, if we start with, uh, since uh, I mean the, the forum here, the, the Persian Gulf Forum here, um, I, I also worked, uh, before I had to leave rather quickly, for uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum in Dubai. And I remember him telling me why it was then the Clinton administration why, was, uh, why were the Americans always trying to tell him to get upset about the three island dispute? These are these three islands between Iran and uh, the um, United Arab Emirates. He knew, like so many other Persian Gulf uh, uh, rulers know, they were trying to create trouble. There's, there's nothing like uh, colonial power to try and create trouble in that region, as, as I think uh, many of us no, here, well, if we start geographically, we know the western border. And again, I emphasize the geographical context because this is unavailable uh, in the western media, even though it's available in atlases. It doesn't seem to be that available to journalists. Um, we're in London, so I'm sure we've all been enjoying the uh, Chilcot Inquiry, uh, which is supposed to analyze Britain's role in the war on Iraq. Anyone who thinks about conspiracy theories, I think, um, uh, suffers a loss uh, in some ways when it, when it comes to the war in Iraq, because, of course, the war in Iraq has greatly increased the regional influence of Iran over, uh, over the entire region. But, of course, in Iraq, poor President Obama, who uh, presumably was reading about the Bush surge in Iraq, which uh, so many commentators believed 
was the reason for the decrease in violence in Iraq? Well, I think uh, the best analysts realize uh, it was people like uh, Muqtadar al-Sadra, who has close ties, just as other elements in Iraqi society who have ties, that uh, should take a lot of credit for the decrease in violence in Iraq. Uh, the um, old uh, communist regions of the urban poor in Iraq uh, moved over to um, extended Iranian influence under uh, Muqtada. But I guess um, the State Department analysts don't, uh, don't realize that. They think it's the American troops in Iraq. And uh, it should be added, uh, which of course is relevant to any discussion about uh, external pressure on Iran. Uh, the contracts for the Exxon oil company were signed in the, um, in the past week. Um, we know that uh, Iran has influence over Iraq on, on that western side. On the eastern side, we have Afghanistan. Um, we have a conference here in London starting tomorrow. Uh, the president of uh, Afghanistan, of course, arrived in the past uh, few hours in, in this city. I, I was in Tehran working for uh, Press TV and now an independent production company supplying programs to broadcasters such as Press TV. I, I was banned from this conference tomorrow. I'll still be broadcasting from outside. I, I did make a, a point to the Foreign Office that um, Iran does border with Afghanistan, unlike the United Kingdom, but um, didn't, didn't seem to uh, hold much sway, alas. I think it's uh, interesting that the so-called